Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today a new card featuring Lon Fawn's newest release, High Five, and that pull and pop pull tab. I am using my Uhuhu bullet nib markers. I do have the color chart on the screen. These will also be posted on my blog at www.inkyandscrappy.com. I have a separate page where all of my color swatches from my bullet nibs are currently placed. I add to it as I remember, but most of them are on there. So if it is not there, it should be linked to this card's blog post currently. I will get it on there sooner or later. I also pulled in a couple of Copic colors because I haven't found that color combination in my Uhuhu's yet. I'm sure I will. I just haven't yet. I am also using Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Life in Bloom. I love the color scheme of this paper pack. I actually picked it up for another card. So you will be seeing it again if you follow me on inkyandscrappy.com. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel as it helps the channel grow. And of course, it alerts you when new videos go up on the channel. This is actually the first of my new stamp set series with featuring Fly High from Lawn Fawn. So I usually pick a stamp set and then I play with it for a while. So usually three to five and or if you followed my last one, six cards. I just like to get, I don't know, I usually get in a zone and I have multiple ideas once I start stamping them out. And so I find it's easier to get a whole bunch of them done. And then I feel like I maybe got a little bit of my money's worth out of the stamp set before I put it in my stash to pull from for future cards. I am coming in with a clouds border stencil from MFT for this one. And I didn't rewatch. I think I watched like maybe Kelly Marie's first part in the Lawn Fawn launch release video of how this one like gets put together. I don't think I actually made it through the whole video. Life has been hectic lately. We'll just put it that way. And I ended up going on vacation during Lawn Fawn's release week, like preview stuff. So I didn't actually get to watch all of the YouTube videos. Someday I'll get back to them, maybe, <laughs> possibly, which means I need to get on the treadmill because I usually watch videos while I treadmill. So anyways, I'm putting this together kind of blindly. I did end up following along to her instructions later on while I was putting it together, I remembered the gist of it. I probably could have saved myself a few steps if I'd actually sat down and rewatched the video first. But you'll see how I, you know, modify, overcome, and adjust as I work on figuring this one out. So I did put this part right here in real time. It, it's slow going for me when I first start. So sliding that top piece in the top part and then the bottom piece going through the bottom part. And I think this was the part that I forgot that that tab was going to be on the front of my card. I was thinking I could get by with doing my whole front panel and not having to put an extra panel over the top of it to cover it. It happens. I also probably should have paid attention to how I was folding or shall I say attaching this piece right here. So if I'd have folded it the other way, I could have, you know, made my pattern paper match with the pattern paper that is currently on my background. Yeah, I didn't. So it's one of those, you know, pay attention. After the fact, it was a little too late because I'm a liquid glue adhesive kind of girl because the dry stuff just does not stay for me very well. And so I was making sure that this was going to work as planned. I had a couple of different ideas for this one and it does have a hidden surprise in there and so that was kind of what I was working on to make sure that it was going to work. So I realized that my pull tab needs to get covered up so I'm going to bring in that pull tab die from that set and I will die cut that from that pattern paper. I 
And then of course I need to ink blend it so it matches my background panel. So again, I'm coming in with, I'm pretty sure I used Distress Ink in Salvage Patina for my tealy blue color there. And it actually went very well with this paper pack, that color combo. So I'm gonna glue this on top of my tab and luckily I used liquid adhesive because it just did not go as well as planned. So I will trim off my end here because I know that I need to have it. And maybe I'll discuss where I think I probably should have done it a little differently just because it didn't go because you see my grassy border there, it's not going to be long enough. But if I'd have done it a little bit different, I probably could have gone around that one. So I have this on there. I'm, I keep trying it, making sure it's going to work. And I decided I didn't like the stitched edging on that pull tab piece. I probably could have left it and gone with it. But I brought in another piece here and then I die cut another cloud border out. And then I'm going to come back in and ink blend on that one to make that one match my original background piece. And then I also brought in a purple from close to my heart. I think it's either petal or amethyst. I'm not exactly sure, but it's a pretty purple. And then here's my other, and maybe I should have made this piece a little bit longer and I went to had issues. Um, but really, if I had cut down my panel a quarter of an inch or a little bit better and actually put it up, kind of like you see where it's at right now on the panel where my pull tab would hang down and below the grass, it maybe would have gone a little bit better. Maybe. I don't know. It's, it's, you know, next time if I would do something similar to this one, I would definitely either move my panel up a little, you know, so it has a border. So you can grab that full tab or I would make my grass just a teeny tiny little bit taller so that it would actually look like grass there. So I did come in and kind of stick those pieces that kind of popped off. I guess if I had glued my little top pieces a little bit better, they might have stick stuck there and not looked quite so silly. I don't know. It is what it is. So once I have that on there, I did remember how I was supposed to glue this one. So I'm just making sure that it lines up and adding some dry adhesive on this one. I'm not worried about this one coming off because it's not a part of the movable feature on this one. And then I am going to cut out a notch on my back panel here. The idea is that you can actually grip that pull tab piece a little bit so you can move it up and down. So I was thinking, because I was focusing on that pull tab and wanting it to have a little bit more grab room space on there, I decided to bring in some foam adhesive. I probably should have watched the video on this one for where said foam adhesive needed to go. I was thinking the sides, <sighs> it should have just been on the top. And so... I needed to think about this one for a little bit because I knew I messed up. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go and add in that piece. It's working over there. And so, so I did try removing it. It was not budging. It was some super strong adhesive foam tape, as you can see here. Yeah. I was like, all right, fine. So I just left it be. I put my foam on the top here and then I'm just going to slit my foam strips a little bit. And I just did that for peeling it up on the end piece here. You'll see how I do that when I attach it to my card base. So I'm just going to peel up on those side panels, the little, the little part, not the big part. So it's not actually stuck down in those middle pieces. The you know, the foam tape is there, but it's not actually sticking to my card base, which is fine. And it works perfectly this way. It gives it a little bit more of wheel room to grab onto that 
little flap. I could have done the die on my card base and ran it through my die cut machine to get that slot a little bit better. Maybe next time. But for this one, it was working how I wanted it to work. So once I had the mechanism all done and my background finally put together and mostly finished here, I can start with the rest of my imagined layout. So this was my, I wanted to add the banner coming down, like hanging down from the balloon. I probably should have stamped some words on it before I actually attached it. So I just ended up adding some little hearts later on to it because I hadn't really decided where I was going with this one sentiment wise. So, and because the pull tab was right there, and this is where I say if my grass would have been a little bit taller or my pull tab would have been down, like, you know, down below my actual panel, I think it would have looked better just because I wanted the little critters in the middle and it was kind of hard to put them in the middle with that pull tab there. So if that makes sense. So my layout design on this one just was not as good as it could have been. So I took a piece of black ribbon and glued it to the back of my little balloon basket there. And then I'm just gonna cut it. I cut it down so it was long enough that I can add my little banner flag, flag banner, man, kind of like, you know, with the little airplanes when you we were at the ocean, the little airplanes would fly by with their little banners. Kind of the same idea. And I did pull that banner from the plain and simple stamp set. As it was, that was its intended purpose originally, I guess. And then I'm gonna add on my two smaller balloons to add a little bit more depth and dimension, showing that they're further back. And then the one tucking it back behind the clouds there and then adding the other little banner on there so it gives it a little bit different look than the other two. And then I did end up moving my little elephant and mouse over a little bit. And I had originally was going to just pop them down on my panel without doing some pop-up. And then I decided I wanted them popped up just a little bit. Since my balloon was is going to come out and up, I thought that the little critters probably should be popped up a little bit as well. And this way, when you pop it up, you see that little purple banner underneath it. I just thought it was a cute little you know, surprise. And then for this one, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I thought about stamping. I just couldn't find a sentiment that was the right one. And I'm going to end up pulling out my heart die again. This is one of my favorites for little teeny tiny, making little teeny tiny hearts, glitter hearts. So if they're just all the different sizes and it just works so well to get the other ones. And so I figured I needed to put a sentiment on this one. I hadn't really decided what I wanted, but I loved some of the words in this one and it's the celebrate every day. So I'm going to tuck that on the top there. Sorry, I am off screen. And then I will come in here and add in my little, I decided the pull tab needed to be a little bit brighter because it's kind of lost in that text paper there. So I did color it with my darkest pink that I used on my balloon. I probably could have gone with the lighter pink because it got pretty dark. And then I will pop up my balloon here and then add in some of those silvery hearts underneath the balloon. I probably should have added some of those hearts to my other balloon just for a little bit of an added contrast or something, you know, to tie them in. I could still do that. That'd be kind of cute. And then, of course, I overglued. So, trying to clean up that excess. 
and then making sure it all works. It looks good. I am happy with this one. So I could still see that that white paper was under there. I probably could have just inked it with some of that teal, the salvage patina color or a little bit of that purple and it would have probably been fine. But I could still see it, so I just pulled in another little piece of paper, die cut it, cut out where I needed it to cover, and then added some glue, and then I'm just going to pop that on top of that other piece there. And then that hides that. And then I did actually take all of my pictures and my last edited video, and then I decided it just needed some more glitter to go with those glittery hearts and so I did end up on my final picture you can see I did add glitter to all, both of the balloons in the background and the front balloon there it just kind of added a little bit of sparkle and shine and so there is my completed card I hope you enjoyed and please join me for the rest of the card series on Inky and Scrappy it was a pleasure to be with you today on Crescent Creations design team. So I hope you have an amazing day. Keep getting inky.